In today's video, I'm going to share with you what it would take uh, for me, a veteran driver, someone who's driven four and a half years, 26,000 rides, but I haven't driven since Super Bowl Sunday back in February, early February. What would it take for me to get back in my car and start driving for Uber and Lyft again? And stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you why I won't be getting back into my car in the year 2020. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Ride Share Guy. Drinking my Nespresso. It's about nine o'clock on Tuesday. Good day to you. So this is what I look like about two years ago when I was a driver driving in San Francisco and I had my, my little be blue beauty, my uh, Prius. Yes, a lot has changed. So let's jump in to the different things I'm thinking about when I consider going back to being a driver. So number one, what has changed? What exactly has changed since February? Well, of course, one huge change is the uh, COVID-19 arrived, the pandemic. And here you see a cute picture of the Mona Lisa. Uh, she's got her mask on. So what's been the impact of COVID-19 well, there's certainly the safety issue. Um, there's less demand for cars, right? But also there's less drivers. So I think you can probably make the same or better money if you want to drive, right? Another thing that has changed is um, we independent contractors have been able to get some unemployment insurance benefits. In fact, for four months, I was getting paid $450 plus 600. That's 1,050 per week. That's about half what I could make as a full-time driver in San Francisco, but I didn't have to drive. I didn't have to you know, risk getting into an accident, and I certainly didn't have to risk getting sick. So um, that money has stopped in, in terms of that amount. Then uh, over the last six weeks, it dropped down to 450 plus 300 to 750 per week. And as of right now, with no stimulus uh, 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 deal, in the offing, it looks like I'm at 450 a week um, towards the end of the year. Okay, so the money that's coming in now uh, is not significant. So that's not really a factor um, when I consider going back to work. Okay. Number two, what's the main issue? The main issue for me is safety, right? How do I get into a car with 20 to 30 people a day getting in my car and out of my car? Yes, we can wear the masks, but still, I still feel that that is too much of a risk. And given that I don't want to spread uh, COVID-19 to other people, uh, that's just not something I'm willing to do at this point. Okay, number three, what's the second biggest issue? Well, the second biggest issue is that on November 3rd, there's going to be a big vote here in California, and it's going to be determined if Uber needs to classify everybody as an employee or keep them as an independent contractor. If it's the decision is made that they have to make everybody an employee, I will never drive for Uber and Lyft again. <clears throat> you see, I know myself, at the age of 30, that was the last time I ever worked for somebody, last time I had a boss. I'm psychologically unemployable. If I have a boss, I always think I can do better than the boss, and it never works out. It's just a clash of alphas. So. Uh, to ask me to be an employee, to take two weeks of vacation a year, and whatever other restrictions there would be is just not going to work for this cowboy. So um, I got to wait and see what happens on November 3rd uh, with the vote. As you can see here, uh, the San Francisco Chronicle says vote no on Prop 22 to protect drivers and customers. And, and then there's $180 million here being spent uh, on the on the pro yes on 22 campaign I wanted to show you uh, what's going on here in California so this is a 30 second advertisement that's playing all over all over the place uh, for yes on 22 here's the pitch that the yes on 22 people are saying that prop 22 protects um, app-based drivers to choose independent work provides drivers new benefits saves hundreds of thousands of jobs preserves uh, the services, 
and implements a strong new public safety protection. More than 80% of drivers work less than 20 hours a week, have other jobs or responsibilities, and can't work set shifts as employees. And by a four to one margin, app-based drivers prefer to be independent contractors. Um, the latest polling shows that Prop 22 will probably pass. Of course, a lot can change in the next 49 days. Um, but these are pretty compelling arguments that they're making. And they've got a whole bunch of you know, testimonials and things like that. So that's what Prop 22 is, uh, is about here. Um, this is how they're promoting it. And uh, as I said, the dollars are 180 million yes and uh, maybe a million or two against. So uh, it's very much of a David and Goliath situation here. It'll be very interesting to see how the vote goes. But if it turns out everyone's got to be an employee, I definitely will not be driving. So number four, what are the changes I would need to see for me to go back and being a driver? First, I need a vaccine. I need to be able to shoot something in my arm so that I know that I'm not going to get it and that I can't spread it. Okay, that's the only way I'm going to feel confident driving 20 to 30 people around a day in my car. Second, I need to be an independent contractor. So we'll know how that goes on November 3rd. Third, I need to know that the rates that I was making back in February have not been uh, reduced. In fact, that I can make the same or better money as a result of Prop 22. Um, that's important because um, over the four years that I've been driving, um, it, it, it's, it was the highest when I started, right? The bonuses were the highest, the surge was the highest, the rates, the mile and the time rates were the highest and then it got eroded over time. And frankly, in February, it was just kind of at a point where I was like, is this worth it or not for me to keep doing this? So if the rates get lower than what they were when I quit, then it doesn't make sense for me to drive either. So those are the three things. I need a vaccine. I need to know I'm gonna be an independent contractor and I need to know the rates are where I need them to be so that it makes sense for me to take my car out and, and, and do the work. So what are the key takeaways here? I'm not gonna be driving in the year 2020. Um, I, even, if, even if a vaccine is developed by the end of the year, the chance that it's going to get mass produced and shot into my arm by the end of the year is very, very small, right? Um, there's also a really good chance that Prop 22 will not pass and drivers will become employees in California, setting a whole new standard um, across the country. Um, in which case, this will no longer be a gig that I'll be interested in. Um, I am at my heart an independent contractor. I like the freedom and the flexibility, right? So I just don't see uh, how uh, there's a way that I'm going to get into this car by the end of the year. I'm in a wait and see mode and um, I, need, I need the shot in my arm. I need the rates to be where they are and I need to be remain as an independent contractor so I can drive what I want and take a month off when I want. I don't see that happening uh, if I'm an employee for Uber and Lyft, where I say, hey, it's January, I'm gonna go spend a month you know, in another country and then I'll come back and start working again. I think they'll say, I see you later, right? Nice to know you, but uh, that's just not how we're doing things anymore now that you're all employees. So that's the key takeaway is I need to wait and see, no plans to drive. I'm 100% focused on my plan Bs. I got two plan Bs I'm working on. And, uh, and that's definitely taken up enough time for me at this point. All right, how about you? Are you planning to go back to drive? What are the factors that are going to Im impact whether you decide to go back and drive or not? I realize some of you are driving already, but for those of you that are holding out, um, is there anything that, what needs to change uh, for you to start driving again? Please share that in the comments. Please like the video, that helps more people to see it. And, um, this is Jay Crater. I want to say thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet to our channel here at the Rideshare Guy, subscribe, set yourself up for notifications. We send out five to six videos a week, all about the gig economy, personal finances, things like that. You'll go ahead and have a great day. Be safe, wear a mask. Be safe, wear a mask. Be safe out there. Bye for now.